listening to Two Babies in a Business, a podcast about babies, business, life, and more. And today we're continuing our series on artificial intelligence in the marketing industry. Uh, today I'm joined by my uh, good friend out of Vancouver, uh, Maurizio Rojas, uh, who is um, not only a fellow WSI uh, internet consultant uh, and digital marketer, but also a fellow hiker. Uh, and I think a fellow outdoorsman. So uh, Maritza, thank you uh, very, very much for joining me today to talk about some AI in the marketing industry. I'm so happy to be here, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, so I wanted to invite you on here uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, you and I have been talking quite a lot in the last little while on all kinds of different things. And I know that you recently actually uh, spoke uh, to a group of people, uh, business people, I, I believe, about uh, artificial intelligence. So Maybe why don't we start off with uh, who did you talk to? What was the topic of your uh, of your of your uh, of your um, presentation, and uh, how was it received? Yeah, um, this is uh, we're talking about the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade. This is well, it's you know in the Vancouver area is very well known, perhaps one of the uh, best known um, board, boards of trade in the Vancouver area, and um, and they're they're always you know like chasing like. Good topics and something as as any other board of trade topics that really add value to the membership. So I am a member, proud member, and um, and so during one of those conversations, um, I happen to say, oh, and there are so many things happening, marketing, blah blah blah. Artificial intelligence is one of them. So right away, somebody said, hey, why don't we have a, a session for this? Mm-hmm. So that's that's what happened. They invited. This was a uh, uh, by invitation only. These are only, I don't know, what is the select? These are the select members. I think it's it's a level of membership okay. and where they are expecting a little bit more value. So that's that's how it all started. And they did the invite, they did the whole the whole thing. But the idea was not only for not only that that I was going to you know present something, the idea was to have a round table and getting to hear from them. So what I did, uh, as you know, at Dollar said, we have a lot of good, good content and artificial intelligence is one of them. So we, I just went to our, our recent presentations and um, I'm pretty sure that you're aware we have a, an artificial intelligence team and a committee that it's doing all, all sorts of things. So that was so, so helpful. So I ended up with this presentation and my idea is, okay, let's get them to talk. And it was not very difficult, I should say. If if I can if I can say, Peter, like my my first conclusion is one hundred percent of the people there they were at the very least familiar with ChatGPT at the very least. Of course, because all of the media and and, and all of that. And um, we were I don't know maybe like fifteen people. And all of them participated. It was a very, very good, I had a very good participation from people all over the place in terms of of, um, industries, all over the place. But a few that I think that in every single conversation, it pops up, for example, lawyers. Yeah, lawyers, sounds like every single time that there's an AI conversation, lawyers are there. Uh, IT, perhaps not a surprise, you know, IT, they always like, check what is what is new and and for a lot of people this is very it intense intensive and um and and others just i wouldn't say for fun because everything is is for for business and another guy for music flooring so from all sorts of life and um to to answer your question yes everybody was was familiar with it and um some of them I should say I was very surprised. Some of them, they already have like, they were already developing their own AI stuff, hmm. yeah, which was, I, I didn't expect that. They were, I would say, very well versed into this. They were just checking what was new. And um, and e- even the, the, the legal firm, they were all already running their own, I would say nothing sophisticated, but they were getting their feet wet. So yeah, I was. Uh, uh, I didn't expect that a lot of people are already getting their feet wet and getting well versed into AI. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned lawyers, and I just actually had this conversation with Christina, my uh, wife and business partner that uh, people would know from the show. Um, and I'm actually in the process of putting a bit of a contract together, and it's not a highly technical, crazy contract or anything like that. But uh, I've had two kind of use legal use cases in the last two months, actually one month, and I and I went to ChatGDP to help me, you know. And uh, uh, I can just sort of say that in terms of writing really basic contracts. Um, it's a very useful tool for that particular use case. Like it's sort of like, here's what I want in the contract. In fact, one of them was uh, 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 helping my dad write his will. Uh, and, you know, my dad lives in British Columbia and he'd like to write a will. And here's the general things that he would like to include in the will. And, you know, can you please format it in a way that's compliant with, you know, legal, uh, you know, British Columbia you know, laws, that kind of thing. And boom, spit it out. It was really, really good. So, I mean, I, you know, it's still something I would vet through a lawyer and that, you know, I, I obviously... I uh, would still get some legal advice on sort of making sure that it it's it's complete and all that kind of stuff. But as a as a starting point, um, it was it's I th I thought it was a really good tool. So it doesn't surprise yes. me actually that the legal profession is, you know, utilizing the tool well. Yes, actually, one of the one of the um, topics that that uh, we talked about there is how dangerous is what exactly what we are saying. It's very yeah. dangerous. Yes, yeah. it, it is dangerous, and as you said. I would say that everybody would, you know, bring a lawyer at the end of the day before really making use of a contract. I yeah. think anybody would would do it. And very similar, like what what you're saying, Peter. I I am going through. I would say like an unusual real estate operation where I am buying a real estate property, but I am bringing an investor with me. So it's two people buying yeah. one. It's not my wife, right? Yeah. So it's kind of unusual. So what I did is, yeah, good old chat GPT. And I started doing my contract. And I I don't know if I will end up using what, what I got. I don't know if I will share this with a lawyer at the end of the day. But one thing for sure, I'm pretty sure in, in a few minutes slash hours, I learned so much about what would what what is it that I would like to see in the contract. Right. So that thing with the investor, it is so, so focused. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, that's the worst case scenario. I learned a lot in a few hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think that's, you know, one of the major use cases of uh, AI in marketing and sounds like in law, maybe it's just ideation, right? It's just sort of had a, you know, what, yes. what am I not thinking of? What else should I be thinking of? Those yes. types of things, you know, really handy, really kind of time saving when it comes to those types of things. So, um, so I'm curious about, you know, obviously you came in uh, to facilitate, it sounds like uh, some roundtable discussions with the Board of Trade in Vancouver uh, and was primarily your focus around uh, AI for the marketing industry or for using AI for marketing, or was it a little bit more broad than that in terms of the, the topic of discussion? Initially, it was it was marketing, but when I was going through the through the um, slides, I realized that I was difficult not to go a little bit further. And um, and in people's mind, it again it's difficult not to go further from from marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and perhaps I started to to think. A little bit more like uh, beyond beyond marketing. I, I think it's difficult not to when you start to think about like um, use cases. I think it's difficult. It's difficult, but um, this this is changing. Like this changes by the week, by the day, and what I what I think I know about AI, which I don't I don't consider myself an expert by no means, mm -hmm. but I think that I have a I have the um, what should I put it? the um, curiosity to keep learning? And yeah, as many of us, I check the articles and within our WSI community, you know, every single day, at least two, three, four, five articles that are filtered by our colleagues that are good articles. So I think it's difficult not to go beyond, beyond marketing because the, I don't know, like the borders are like huge, immense yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say that, like, uh, one of the things that I think about a lot, actually, is uh, what I call the end-to-end -end, end -end customer journey. And so marketing is a part of the end-to-end -end -end customer journey, right? Probably an early part. But then from, you know, when you when you sort of start from marketing, 
And then you get into sort of a lead generation and then you get into a fulfillment and then you get into sort of a, you know, client satisfaction, client, you know, uh, relationship management, that type of thing. I mean, they're not really all parts of marketing, but they're all parts of what kind of helps a company to, you know, pro provide a great customer uh, experience from beginning to end that really starts with marketing. And I really see personally AI being, being able to help bring those pieces all together, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, things like customization and things like automation and things like personalization. And, you know, so I, I think that this is just my opinion that I think AI will force us marketers to think beyond just marketing uh, and think more around all of the parts of the customer journey. And so to your point, um, it's sort of it's just hard to stay in the marketing box. <laughs> and I think that it's just going to force us, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's part of the, uh, this makes it a little bit more fun. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult. Perhaps the boundaries are there, but I kind of are kind of great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think these tools will come in and make it even more great. And it'll just be sort of one discipline in terms of the customer <laughs> from beginning to end, right? And how to how to kind of make that a seamless experience, you know, throughout you know, the whole the whole customer journey, right? So so I'm curious a little bit around um, you know, what was the sort of tone from people? Were people feeling excited? Were people feeling nervous? Um you know, were people apprehensive about AI adoption within their companies? You know, can you give us a flavor of what people were sort of saying and feeling about it? I would say uh, this is only my interpretation of, of what I perceive there. I would say people are curious. Did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> curious. <laughs> people are curious. And, um, and I would say they are willing to just keep learning, keep learning more. But uh, I'm pretty sure that very soon, at least half of the people there were all already working in, in something like real that will deliver some sort of, 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 of result that will change the way they do things. Mm -hmm. So I would say that most of them, uh, I would say half of them at least, they, they, are, they were pursuing or are pursuing something like real that will change the way you do things more in, with more or less impact. But yeah, I think that is, that is the, uh, the mood. I don't know. This is a perception and perhaps I will, I will ask you, Peter, my perception is that, you know, when chat GPT started, which was like months or maybe years ago, but when it really started to get popular, a lot of, a lot of people were talking about it, but I think that somehow the, the hype, is dwindling, is going down. That doesn't mean that that um, the whole AI thing is, is going down. I think that it's it's difficult that it will, it will go down. But the hype, I think that is, in my perception, and I would like to know what, what you think, my perception is going down, and but perhaps the, the real cases will solidify AI's presence Maybe the world will not be chat GPT anymore, or maybe not the hype. Other things uh, will, will perhaps um, take the, uh, the, the time that, that, that we're talking about something. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I sort of agree with you. I think the sort of initial hype, I mean, chat GPT came yes. out and it was just huge, right? And people were like, wow, this thing is amazing. And, and But I think what's going to happen, this is just my prediction is, you know, we're in the middle of summer, towards the end of summer right now. And sort of, you know, people have been away yeah, uh, on vacation, so. right? Uh, but I know and we know that, for example, uh, Microsoft and Google are planning some big launches here in terms of some of the technology that's you know going to be embedded in their own tools. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that Google has been doing some testing and there's been a few people that have been privy to those tests and part of those tests and sort of commenting publicly about the use cases and things like that. So my prediction is actually... What's going to happen is, um, you know, Google, Microsoft, and you know some of the other, you know, mega uh, mega companies are are going to start to release some of these uh, uh, embedded yes. tools, yes. Uh, and I think it's going to really drastically change work, <laughs> and it's going to create a new hype and a new. I actually think it's maybe going to create a little bit of fear uh, in people. There's a lot of conversation now about you know the impact of AI on jobs and things like that, and so yes, uh, you know, I think that. 
the sort of excitement is sort of maybe has peaked and now it's sort of a bit of a reality is like, okay, what does this actually mean? Uh, and, you know, companies are going to need to figure out pretty quickly, like once, you know, say G Suite fig sends, you know, here's a suite of tools out of, out of Google that are all of a sudden going to make, you know, some of the really hard mundane tasks that we do really easy and quick. Uh, it's going to be kind of like an eye opener for people. And so I think that's going to create all kinds of like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Um, you know, and, and I think it depends on how closely you're paying attention to, because if you're paying attention really closely, like I know you are and I am and, and our and our colleagues at WSI are, I mean, you know, every day there's new tools, new this, new that, new announcements. There's a lot going on in the sector. So you know, it's one of those things that you know, people are sort of on vacation, uh, and they're going to come back and, 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 you know, in a few months from now, they're going to say, wow, what is going on here? And I'll, I'll give you an example of, uh, I just listened to a marketing AI Institute's podcast, uh, this morning that they released and they were talking about, um, actually, you know, the use of AI and AI policies in the education sector, as an example, and, 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 you know, schools are going back in the United States right now, Canadian schools are going to be going back yeah. in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, there are some schools that have started to put out, you know, here's the AI policy for students um, and, you know, that parents need to sign that policy. And so things like that are going to start to you yes. know, create a buzz and, an, and a conversation. And unfortunately, based on at least that podcast, um, you know, the policies not aren't necessarily that well thought out. Um, and there's a lot of holes that you can blow into those policies. And so, you know, interestingly, uh, Paul from the Marketing AI Institute sort of said, you know, some of these feel like they were the schools were rushing to get these policies out and 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 maybe it was better just to say nothing because now they have these policies that sort of are contradictory that are kind of vague you know it's like some say that students can't use ai at all but and then the next sentence they say but if they do they need to Thanks reference that they did and then you know then it's like the teacher's That's discretion true. and so there's going to be a lot Whoa. of confusion right and you know imagine yourself being a parent who all of a sudden gets told your, you know, your son's in trouble because he used AI to do a school assignment. Um, oh yeah, for sure. And what does that mean? He used AI. He, the whole assignment was done with AI. He used it for ideation. There's a lot of, I think we're going to be in a point where there's going to be a lot of conversation and questions around, okay, well, now what yes. do we do stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I, that I share with this, with this group, and when I talk about this, Peter, I feel like a like a I am an oldie because um, I I I would say that I, I'm proud that I implemented my first uh, artificial intelligence patient in 1990. Wow. Uh, some of the people that I talked to they, they were not in this world in 1990, so that's yeah. why I feel a little bit oldie. But um, at that point, they were. I wouldn't say I wouldn't call it a hype, but expert systems yeah. was like the name of the game. And and I was working, I was the CIO for a for a first size company. I can't remember, like our sales were, I don't know, maybe 400, 500 million. And um this was like think of like a, bo a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. It was something like that. But even though Blockbuster, this was in my old country in Mexico, and um they were our our client. And um and what, what we did is this expert system was, I wouldn't call it replace, replacing, but it was taking care of every single new title available in the country. We're talking about like a big, big country. Um, the expert system would recommend what titles to be um, distributed on each one of the, of the video stores. And we're talking about maybe uh, 12, 1300 video stores nationwide. So it will tell us what, in order to maximize the return for each one of the titles that we were of course paying royalties for, where each one of the titles, where it, it should be distributed, how many copies, wow. when. So that was, that was very, very cool. Yeah. And um, so the good news is that the expert system was completed. And it was working, but then after that, all the things happened that, that have nothing to do with the expert system. But my point is, um, AI applications have been around for years, mm -hmm. years, years, and years. Yeah, I mentioned that because I was part of that, and I'm very proud of it. 
Yeah. And it was not cheap, by the way. It was not cheap at all. And we had very, very specific like um, experts in uh, experts in expert systems developing it. And um, but artificial intelligence has has been here for a while. Yeah. But I think that this time is is more well, it's as real as always. But perhaps the opportunity uh, is like the um, the land is more fertile today yes. for this kind of technologies, and I think that is exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's interesting that you say that because I was listening to something the other day where they were talking about seven decades, seventy years that some of the foundational technology that's now sort of powering AI is as was started Absolutely. 70 years ago. And so, yes. you know, uh, you know, this person was kind of giving a comparison between, you know, kind of when the internet, you know, the World Wide Web came to sort of to be, uh, and and you know, now that sort of really chat GDP, all it did was bring forward 70 years of technology and made it sort of consumer facing for the first time in a real exactly. way, not in a way that like your average consumer can now sort of interface practical. with it practical way. Right. Yes. And so now all of a sudden people are like, wow, but to your point, exactly. like this stuff is like the foundation, the infrastructure, it's all been developed for a long, long time to get to where we are today. And so now we're in this all of a sudden explosion of applications. And now we're just really kind of just in the very, very early stages of actually like, what does this mean from a consumer facing perspective? Right. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of things that I think are going to get developed and the technology is going to speed up and, you know, yada, 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 right? So yeah, it's it's definitely an exciting world. So I mean, what what, what advice would you have for businesses as they're thinking about AI right now? Um, or, you know, do you, is there any sort of best practices that you've been following or that you've been hearing of that you think are really good that, that people should be thinking about? Uh, what I've been doing and what I would suggest to any business person, small or, or, or not small companies is, just get the conversation going. And I'm not necessarily saying, oh, because I am a consultant, maybe I can get into a project. No, 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 let's get the conversation going. Yeah. The opportunity is there for consultants, for companies, for clients, for suppliers, it is there. And I, I really like what our, uh, what our um, chairman of the board, the way, the way he puts it, well, not only him, but I, that's, him is, is the first person that I, that I heard this. That AI will not will not correct me if I'm wrong if I'm putting it correctly. AI will not uh, replace me. Somebody using AI tools might replace me. Yeah, yeah. It goes on those on those lines. That's right. I think that the solution for that is get the conversation going with almost all of my clients. I just bring a conversation. Most of the time they say, oh yeah, 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 we're playing with this. Some of them say, oh yeah, yeah, we already have an application and we are getting into images. Mm -hmm. Some others say, yeah, I use it for all my emails. It, it's different, different answers that you get. Yeah. And uh, for those who say, yeah, I've heard about it, but that's it. I, I start, you know, like, uh, uh, like in, in a friendly way, say, okay, homework for you. I just send them the, the link. And I say, next, next week, tell me what you think. And not one has not done its, its homework or her homework, gotten back to me and say, this is exciting. Some of them say, oh yeah, this is interesting and bye-bye. But they, they say, I'll, I'll do it again, I'll test it. Now they know the seed is, is in. Right. I yeah. think that will be answering your question, Peter. That will be my advice. Put it on the table. Yeah. Just, there are very few experts yes. today, and those experts have to keep up because the, the, the speed is unbelievable. Yeah. So you don't need to be an expert. You're, you're not expected to, you know, to teach people. Just get the conversation going, keep reading, and I think nothing but good things can happen. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And it's interesting. I actually, it was another WSI I see I was talking to the other day, and he was telling me that uh, one thing they do is just every Friday, they have a 15 minute roundtable asking their staff how they used AI this week. And it was just more of a, you know, and I think that's a great idea, right? Because your staff yeah. are using AI, whether you know it or not. And so one is that use of AI in a way being done in a way that sort of could cause problems for your company. I like, for example, are they using proprietary company information to 
into the software, you know, into the into the tools, and could that then be a problem for you? <laughs> and yes, so yes, we yes. need to know if that's happening, so that we could put some policies in place and some principles in place as to how to use it, you know, in a way to keep our company safe. Or two, you know, are are there things we can learn? I mean, we have lots of different staff, and they're all you know innovative people and creative people, and they may have some amazing use cases that somebody in sales maybe is using yes. it in a way that could help marketing and maybe that could help a, you know, whatever accounting, you know, so, you know, like it just sort of like, oh, like to your point, put it on the table, open the door, open the conversation, uh, be open about it. I think obviously, you know, people are going to be making mistakes. Um, and so, you know, if I use the example of maybe somebody using AI in a way that might be compromising to your company, you know, I'd want to know that I probably wouldn't punish the person. But, you know, OK, so, OK, maybe that's maybe not a good use case. Maybe we should put some policies around <laughs> maybe how not to use it as well. Right. And so uh, but I think if you're sort of closed off to it, then that those you don't you you lose all opportunities to have those discussions and to actually know what's going on and maybe some, lose some opportunities to create some efficiencies. Right. I like when, when people when people uh, ask uh, each other and what do you know about this? I like when people say enough to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. This case, you don't need to learn a lot to be really dangerous. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, you know, this is sort of uh, one uh, episode in a series. I'm talking to a lot of uh, marketing uh, agencies, mostly through the WSI uh, network, because uh, because it's a great network and we're all talking about this. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate yeah. your insights. I really appreciate hearing about uh, how the Vancouver Board of Trade uh, conversations went and, and a little bit about what you're doing. So uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. Thanks. Thanks, Peter, for having me. All right. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Two Babies in a Business. To learn more, visit CIPRcommunications.com or catch us on our socials at CIPRcoms.